ecological pyramids. Rather than building food webs which show the interrelationship, pyramids try to look at what's going on at each level in terms of some quantifiable uh, number. The first one, the pyramid of numbers, is the least useful. You expect the deer to outnumber the wolf. You expect the antelope to outnumber the lions. So you should see fewer and fewer animals as we go up the trophic level. However, it doesn't always work because mosquitoes can outweigh, outnumber their prey. A pyramid of biomass is more effective. Unfortunately, you know how big and important we think we are, our poop outweighs us. They estimate that each adult human male has excreted 12 tons of waste in his lifetime. So yes, ladies, men are full of it. You don't retain the weight of every meal you've ever eaten. So absolutely, the pyramid of biomass gets smaller as you go up. But you can't count water and protein and fat and other things do not have the same amount of energy each. So the pyramid of biomass must decay. The predator cannot outweigh the prey. There is no way on earth Godzilla can eat 10 or 12 people in a movie and keep her weight on. We have to switch to pyramid of energy. And to do that, we need to get an idea of what energy is. It's the ability to do work, a thoroughly useless definition that's been around for a century. In metric, we measure energy in joules. In imperial, it's measured in calories. You consume about 10 million joules of food a day, which is a few thousand calories. It takes four joules of energy to raise one gram of water one degree. This means if you boil one cup of water from freezing, you need 100,000 joules to get your cup of coffee ready. So a joule is an incredibly tiny unit of energy. And you need the concept of energy throughout this course and throughout your lives. So I'm going to emphasize it constantly. You already know some energy formulas. The very first formula you ever saw in your life, which ironically is the last one you'll study in school, E equals MC squared, will tell you how much energy is in a chunk of matter if we blow it up and turn it to pure energy. It will predict, along with other math, the strength of an atomic bomb. The other three formulas for energy you typically learn in high school are 1 half mv squared, mgh for height, and mc delta t in chemistry for how much heat energy. Every one of these you could learn in grade 9. You just have to ask me if you're curious. But that's pretty much your energy list you'll get to throughout high school. There are only a few basic types of energy, gravity, motion, electrical, magnetic, heat, sound, elastic, and chemical. Living energy is chemical. We take electromagnetic or radiant energy from the sun and build chemical batteries with it, the strawberry. Okay, and what do we do with this energy? We grow, we move, we heat up, we dump it out as waste, store it on our body, annoy other people, flick their ear. So most of it is dumped out as waste. Only the stored energy can be eaten by a predator. Now, if we look at these animals, we can see that a human being is keeping some of it to heat up and a lot for activity. Oddly, the penguin here doesn't need as much here. So when a human being rests, we still burn. Most of our energy is burned to keep us going. A penguin, when it sits at rest, is burning very little. But if you notice here for the snake, this little wedge for thermal activity is gone. They simply don't need it. But on this mouse, most of its energy is going to stay warm. So mammals waste energy like mad to keep ourselves warm. A snake, you can take a snake or a turtle and not feed it for months. You can't do that with a mammal. So how much energy moves on? Overall, life is stunningly wasteful. We've discussed this in class. If plants absorb sunlight energy, they should be jet black in color. Instead, they're quite bright. So they're reflecting the bulk of the light back. So it is not absorbing all the light. It would have to be jet black if it was. Under infrared, infrared, the situation is even worse. The trees are bone white. They are throwing back 
huge quantities of the incoming light. When we look at this tree on the pavement, the pavement is eating infrared light, but the grass and the trees are not. So the trees and plants reflect the vast majority of the light back to space. And these are the colors that they do not want to eat. They kick back green, yellow, and orange. They're willing to swallow some red, but they really love blue and violet because this is reflected light. So blue is a plant's favorite color to absorb. And this means almost none of the sunlight is actually utilized. Turns out plants only use about 1%. So if plants receive 100 joules from the sun, only one joule of strawberry gets made. So to divide by 100, which is 1%, all you have to do is move the decimal over twice. 100 turns to 1, 217 becomes 2.17, and on. 2100 becomes 210. And cognitive dissonance, anyone? Uh, pay attention to the slide and what I just said. Animals, on the other hand, are 10% efficient. On average, we poop out 90% of our energy and keep only 10% on our bones. All the food you eat from Sunday to Saturday, all of that food until Friday is just to keep you warm. So if you get eaten by a lion one day, it only gets the energy on your bones, not all the food you've eaten in your life. So to get 10% of the energy, you divide by 10. So 100 becomes 10, 450 becomes 45, 9 becomes 0.9. So if I give you some solar energy, you knock off two zeros to get what's left in the plants, and you knock off one zero every level after that. So it kind of looks like this. The producers get a million joules of sunlight. Chop off two zeros, you will only produce 10,000 joules of plant. Top, chop off one zero, you will only have 1,000 joules of snails. Chop off another zero, you only have 100 joules of frog, which leaves you only 10 joules of fox. The energy decays so fast that the food chain will end because each one of these things is pooping out 99% of its energy, 90%, 90%, 90% is pooped out. So the food chains extinguish themselves very quickly. Now this one holds the key for the questions on the energy uh, assignment. If life is losing all this to poop, and 90% of the energy at every stage of the food chain is being wasted. Does this mean that the energy is lost for eternity? Or somehow is the energy scavenged back? In engineering, a scavenging system collects waste heat, waste water, and reuses it. Does nature have something that will recollect the lost energy so it gets back into the food chain. What this implies for nature, can you now understand why you will never find a forest with 50 rabbits and 100 hawks? Why will you always see more zebras and lions? Why can't you find a food chain of 20 levels? What is wrong with an alien movie where a thousand aliens live off the occasional space explorer? And hey, if predators cannot outnumber prey, then how can 10,000 mosquitoes, mosquitoes live on a moose? Okay, so that's Pyramid of Energy, and this one we'll spend a little bit of time on.